welcome to the ninth lecture of combinatorics. So, yesterday we stopped with uh, one problem. So, uh, this was a combinatorial identity 2 n choose n is equal to sigma k equal to 0 to n n choose k whole square. Right. What does it may be in the Pascal's triangle. So, you can uh, you are saying that uh, uh, if you take the nth sorry you take the nth uh, row right this is n choose 0. So, n choose 1 and then up to n choose n right you square each of these terms right up to then add them together what you get. So, you remember if you were adding without squaring you would be getting 2 raise to n. Uh, now, you are saying that if you square and add right if you square and add you will get 2 n choose n. So, where will 2 n choose n this is uh, 2 n throw if you go 2 n throw right this is 0 th column this is 1 column number 1 1 column second column and this is the nth column right. So, in the nth column in the 2 nth row you will see 2 n choose n right here there will be more numbers say 2 n choose n plus 1 and so on because you know it is increasing like this right. So, so it is something like uh, yeah if you can imagine that this is n to 2 n right this is an n n units here downward and this was n unit and if you draw a line here n unit downwards in this square this corner right this number will come. So, the point is you are squaring uh, the first uh, line of first line of this square if you consider that means when I the square starts with the nth row and ends with the 2 nth row uh, then up to n columns only you are taking n rows here and columns here 0 to n means n plus 1 uh, columns here similarly n throw included. So, n plus 1 columns here in this square here you will reach 2 n choose n. So, if you square up the first rows the members of the first row and add up you will get 2 n choose n this is what it says this is from the Pascal's Pascal's triangle. So, uh, that is what we can uh, see to remember this right and then uh, to prove prove this. So, we want to show that 2 and choose n is that summation. What is 2 and choose n? 2 and choose n means out of 2 n things say numbers 1 to 2 n you are selecting uh, n things. How many ways you can select the n subsets of 2 n right. So, let us say this 2 n is written like this uh, say 1, 2, 3 up to n and then n plus 1, n plus 2 up to 2 n right this is one group let us say these are uh, women and these are men. Uh, men and women. So, so, we are saying that to select an n set from this we could have uh, selected 0 men and uh, n women that is one possible possible way that means that is you can do it in n choose 0 into n choose n ways that means 0 men are selected no man is selected and all n women right or you could have selected one man that can be done in n choose 1 ways because there are n men and out of that one should be selected n choose 1 ways and then we can multiply by the possible ways to select the women it means n minus women and because you need n total right. So, one man is selected now, now we need n minus 1 women right. So, total number of women is n from that n women we can select n choose n minus 1 possible ways of selecting n minus 1 women are there. Now, for each possible selection of the man you can multiply with each possible selection of the women that will give uh, all possibility possible ways to select an n set 
with n element set, n member set uh, consisting of one man and n minus one element. Next, you could have selected uh, n, l, n people, where out of them uh, two are men and n minus two are females, right. So, two men can be selected out of the n available men in n choose two ways. And for each such selection, you can select n minus 2 women out of the n women available in n choose n minus 2 possible ways. Similarly, this can be done with see n choose 3, right, 3 men are selected and then n choose n minus 3 and so on. And uh, for k men, when k men are selected, this will be the general term n choose k into n choose n minus k possible ways you can select. And uh, finally, you can select all men that means n men and no women right this ways. So, this is this will give you the total uh, possible ways to uh, uh, get n people out of the 2 n available people. Because when I say first n are men and first uh, the remaining n are women, the uh, any n subset you make out of this thing should contain some women and some men, men. The number of men can be either 0 or can be 1, it can be 2, it can be 3, it can be n, n possible ways. For each such selection, we have to get the remaining say for n choose k, k men are selected, you have to get the remaining n minus k females. Hmm. So, n choose n minus k possible, these are the total possible ways of. So, why am I multiplying this thing for because k men are selected. Uh, then for each such k selection of men, so you have n minus k possible, uh, n choose n minus k possible selection of n minus k women out of available n women. That is why this is, then uh, that is by multiplication rule we get each of these term and then by addition rule we, because these are all disjoint sets, right, because you know a collection, a subset consisting of uh, 0 men and n women, that is uh, uh, that kind of subsets are not counting the subsets where one uh, man is there and n minus 1 female is there. So, these are all disjoint things. So, we can uh, add up right by addition principle we will, but then still this is not what we want. We wanted n 0 square plus n, n choose 1 square plus sorry n, n choose 0 square plus n choose 1 square plus n choose 2 square and so on. So, that we will get if you observe that this term is actually n choose 0. For instance, here I can put 0 instead of n. Why? Because I can use the identity, the symmetry identity. That means, I know that n choose k equal to n choose n minus k, right. In principle, n choose 0 is equal to n choose n choose n. So, n choose n can be replaced by n choose 0, right. So, here I can replace n by 0, here similarly n choose n minus 1 here can be replaced by 1 right instead of this thing, because n choose 1 is equal to n choose n minus 1 right. So, similarly uh, each term we can replace here I can put 2, so here I can put 3, here in general I can put k and here it will be n itself. So, what is this n choose 0 into n choose 0. Uh, n choose 1 into n choose 1, n choose 2 into n choose 2 like that. So, this is essentially uh, n choose 0 square plus n choose 1 square uh, plus uh, like that n choose n square. And we know that this is the total uh, possible ways to select n people out of 2 n uh, available people, right. This is a combinatorial proof of um, that identity. Now, the next identity we want to prove is this one. So, similar one. Let n be a positive integer of case k less than equal to n and a non negative integer of case. So, um, now k equal to 1 to n. So, this is this identity says a 
yeah this identity says uh, n into 2n minus 1 n minus 1 is equal to k equal to 1 to n right k into n choose k whole square k into n choose k whole square How do we prove this thing? So, it looks this here we have n choose k whole square and multiplier is there into k n choose k whole square into k. So, k equal to 1 to n and here it is n into 2 n minus 1 choose n, uh, n minus 1. So, we first interpret it in the following way we can try to interpret in the following way. So, again we have uh, 2 n people uh, 2 n persons available say out of which uh, say 1, 2, 3, the first n are females and the remaining n, n plus 1, n plus 2 up to 2 n are males. These are females and this is males. Now, I want to form uh, committees, the subsets of size uh, n as usual. But this time, um, I also want to, so because this is the subsets are interpreted as committees and uh, we want uh, a chairperson for the committee, each committee needs a chairperson. The only condition is that the chairperson has to be a woman. So, how many ways you can do this thing? So, this number will give the answer, how does it give the answer? So, you can first select the chairperson in how many ways? So, there are n women, any of them can be the chairperson. So, now you select uh, it in n choose one n, way, n ways, right? n ways you can select. Now, once you have selected the committee person, chairperson, now you have to just select the remaining members of the committee. The remaining members of the committee can be all men, all women, some men, some women, no problem women. So, therefore, uh, we just have to select the remaining n minus 1 persons out of the remaining n minus 1 people, 2 n minus 1 people. So, from the remaining 2 n minus 1 people, you have to select the uh, n minus 1 remaining people. So, first in n ways, we selected uh, the chair, chair person and then for each possible selection, we can uh, we have remaining 2 n minus 1 people available. Out of that, I can uh, choose the remaining n minus 1 committee members in this many ways, 2 n minus 1 choose n minus 1 ways. So, this number gives you the possible committees along with the chairperson. Uh, it is just that what we are counting is not just the committee, it is the committee with the specific chairperson. For instance, it can be the committee can be say, 1, 2, 3 and say n plus 1 up to n minus 3 or so, right. Sorry, uh, n, uh, n plus n minus 3 or so, 2 n minus 3 or so, right. That means, okay, for instance, if there are n equal to 10 case, uh, the committee can be 1, 2, uh, 5 people are required, right. 1, 2, 3, say 9, 8. This can be the committee, right. But this, in one case, the chairperson can be uh, one. In another case, for the same committee members, the chairperson can be uh, say two, but these two will be counted different. For instance, one, two, three, a committee comprising of person number one, person number two, person number three, person number nine and eight, with uh, the chairperson being one will be counted uh, differently. I mean, it, uh, we will think that it is a different committee when the committee members are same, but the chairperson is say instead of 1, the chairperson is say 2, right. So, that will be a different committee. So, therefore, we are actually not counting just uh, that subsets, we are also counting the subset with the chair, right. Who is the chair also? I mean, if the chair is different, we are counting it differently, right. So, that, that is this number and then, um, 
we can count it in a different way to get the same number and show that uh, this is this will correspond to that. How will you do that? See, we can do it this way. First, select the women in the committee. One thing, I mean, slightly different uh, situation from the earlier one. Here, earlier one we could have selected uh, no females and all males, but here it is not allowed because at least one uh, female should be there in the committee because uh, one chairperson has to be a woman, the chairperson has to be woman, every committee should have a chairperson. So, for at least that chairperson will be there as a female. So, therefore, uh, we should have at least one woman. So, we may select one woman right out of the n available woman in n choose one possible ways. And then we may select the remaining men that means n choose n minus 1 ways we can select n minus 1 men out of n, women, n men. So, but then one uh, because there are there is only one woman the committee chair can be decided in only one way right 1 into is not it because there is only one woman that woman has to be the chair or you can have two females in the committee. So, that two females can be selected in n choose two ways and the remaining committee members are all men say. So, we can select that n minus 2 people from n available men in n choose n minus 2 ways. So, these are possible these are the possibilities, but now to decide the chair person we have two possibilities because there are two women here. Similarly, uh, three you could have three women in the committee. So, that means, uh, n choose 3 possible ways to select the female members of the committee and the remaining n minus 3 members has to be selected from the males that can be done in n choose n minus 3 ways right multiply them together to get the all possible combinations. And now, because there are 3 uh, females, so any of them can be the chairperson, so you have to multiply by 3. So, like that in the k case in the general case when we could have selected k uh, female members from the n possible it is in n choose k ways and the remaining uh, n minus k committee members should be male. So, we can select them in n choose n minus k ways. Now, because there are k females here we can make any of them as the uh, chair. So, there are k possibilities to decide the chair. So, k into n choose k into n choose n minus k and finally, when you reach uh, we could have selected all females and choose n right and no male because there is no problem in that and then but then there are n possible ways to select the chair this is it. And again as in the previous case how will you get the form because we have to show that this is same as this k you see almost we have reached k equal to 1 to n k into n choose k square, but we have n choose k into n choose n minus k that we know how to do right because uh, yeah, here we have to n choose 1 is here. So, this should be replaced by 1. Why? Because n choose n minus 1 is equal to n choose 1 by symmetry identity, right. So, that is that is how we can replace n choose n minus 1 by 1. Similarly, this n choose n minus 2 can be replaced by n choose 2. This is n choose n minus 3 should be replaced by n choose 3. N choose n minus k should be replaced by k like that. So, here we can put n right. So, like uh, we did in the previous case this term n choose n into n choose n minus 1 can be read as n choose 1 into n choose 1 that is n choose 1 square. Similarly, n choose 2 into n choose n minus 2 is n choose 2 into n choose 2 itself that means n choose 2 square and so on. So, finally, this turns out to be 1 into n choose 1 square plus 2 into n choose 2 square plus finally, k into k into n choose k square and n into uh, n choose n square. So, this counts that n into 2 n minus 1 choose n minus 1 the same this is. So, by these two examples we have uh, illustrated some reasonably sophisticated counting arguments. I mean, initially that symmetry identity and uh, that 
uh, addition formula we proved were quite uh, simple, very simple. So, these were uh, reasonably uh, more sophisticated counting. So, many times you can see that, um, yeah, so the this kind of identity, so, so this summation, uh, suppose if you see the summation somewhere, you can replace it with a more uh, uh, neat formula like n into 2 n choose n minus 1. So, this will give a better idea of what it is, right. So, that is why some many times this becomes useful that way. So, not that we have to remember all those things, but we should be able to do some such manipulations. So, now I will move on to a uh, new topic, permutations with repetition. So, in other words, uh, we will say permutations of multi sets. So, that will be better illustrating. So, that means, see the point is we have uh, certain, we have seen what a permutation is. For instance, um, say there are these objects A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, in how many ways you can permute, permute it. So, we have seen that the permutations are say, uh, you could have started. So, these are all permutations A2, A1, A3, A5, A4, all ways of arranging it, right. A4, A5, A1, A2, A3, right. How many ways there are? We have seen that there are 5 factorial ways of doing this, right, which is 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5. We have argued that uh, this is because, uh, see, if you want to fill the positions, right, uh, 5 positions. So, this any of this A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 can come here. There are 5 cho choices to fill it. And then the second one, uh, once you have used uh, one one thing, one of the A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 to fill this thing, then only four choices are left here. And once you have filled these two, there are only three choices left here. And then there are only two choices left here. And then there are only one choice left here and so on, right. So, okay, I have used three, only uh, five, five positions are required, right. So, that is why we have got five factorial. Now, but somehow we are assuming here that these are all different things a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5. Suppose they are not different. Uh, suppose we have a 1, a 2 and this a instead of a 3 we have a, again a 1 and this is again a 1, right. And this was an a 3, right. That means we have an a 1, an a 2 and two a 1s and then a 3. So, will it be again uh, 5 factorial? Definitely not. Because uh, when I earlier a1, a2, a, this this was one permutation. Suppose when I put it here and this here, it's a different permutation. But now because they are all a1s, if I take one here and one here, it's not going to change anything because it will it will be the same, right? So how will you count how many permutations are there? This is what uh, we are interested in now. So, let us say uh, we will formulate the problem using this word, uh, using the form uh, this this concept of multi sets, multi sets. What is a multi set? Uh, we know that a set is a collection of objects, right, I see something like this. But in a set, we do not count, uh, we do not put the same object more than once. We assume that each object comes only once there in the set. In a multi set, we allow uh, copies of the things, for instance, we can have a 1, a 1, a 1, uh, say then a 2, a 2, a 2, right, 2. So, like that. So, we also allow repetitions in multi sets, right. We assume that the same object is present more than one times. So, one uh, neat way of writing it is, for instance, this is 3 a 1, we can write it as 3 a 1s and here 4 a 2s and uh, say 2 a 3s and so on. This is one possible way of writing it only. When it is finite set, we can just write yeah, 1 a 1, right, 2 a 2 something and then say some k a n, right. So, that means one time a 1 has appeared one times a 2 has appeared 2 times, a n has appeared k times and so on, right. So, this is going to be our notation for multi sets. 
So, now we are interested in this kind of uh, things as I mentioned earlier. So, we are interested in the permutations of multi sets. So, the questions can be uh, two different things. For instance, I can ask for uh, like there is a multi set S and I want an R length permutation of this thing like we were asking for whether there are n objects we want to have uh, um, we, we want to take r of them and order them. We have to get an ordered list of r things from the n given things like that from the multi set if I want to get r things r things ordered list of r things from this multi uh, set of s. So, we will we will not answer it completely here, but we will answer some special cases. One special case we can easily argue is this case when s is equal to say infinity times uh, say a 1 infinity times a 2 right infinity time uh, and say infinity times a k there are k things and then each of them have infinite copies right in the multi set. This is an infinite set, but only there are k types of things only finite uh, k is finite as a finite number k types of things, but of each type we have infinite uh, copies right. Then we can answer that question. Uh, easily. So, if S is a multi set with objects of k different types where each has an infinite repetition number that is the word we use repetition number how many times a particular object uh, repeats. So, see you say it is of a certain type then the type repeats how many how many times that is the repetition number of the type then the number of R permutations of S is how much. So, this is easily answered because uh, you know um, you just have to think of filling r positions this is r positions this is first position second position third position r positions the first position can be filled in k different ways because there are k types of things right you can place it any of the say a1 or say a2 or uh, a3 or ak any of them can be put here right and uh, everything is available because each one has infinite copies. And here second one, second position can also be filled in k different ways, why? Because whether you fill it with an a 1 or not still we have a 1 copies of a 1 left we can use it here. And similarly this also can be filled, this position also can be filled in k different ways, this also can be filled in different ways, there are r positions. So, totally k into k into k into say r times right that is k raised to r possible ways to fill it. So, therefore, uh, the number of when uh, the multi set is such that there are k different type of things in it say first type is say a 1 and then a 2, a 3, a k uh, represent the k different types and each of this a i uh, has infinite number of copies in it then we can uh, make r combinations. Uh, sorry r permutations right r length permutations from this multi set then things are taken from the multi set we want an r length ordered list right. So, that this can be done in k to the power r it is quite easy right. So, right this can be done in k to the power So, then uh, yeah once you look at this uh, proof you see that uh, that assumption that the multi set s is of this form that means infin infinity times a 1 uh, infinity times a 2 right a 2 um, and all the way to infinity times a k was not really necessary because what we bother is what we are bothered is when I try to fill this thing you might have filled something 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 here uh, yeah sure. So, after filling it uh, then now when I, when I reach here it should so happen uh, it should not happen that so I want to fill some a 1 here that a 1 is finished off uh, when I say infinite copies are there it will never finish off that was the only intention of saying there are infinite copies right. But, uh, but this we can ensure even if we say that there are 
uh, r copies right so if we just assume that uh, if each type uh, has repetition number number at least r that would be sufficient right because you know even if i use ai everywhere uh, even when i reach uh, at the last uh, place i still have a ai left so then nothing will run out of stock right so therefore uh, i can still say that uh, the number of possible ways to make uh, r permutations r length ordered lists out of this multi set is k to the power uh, r right because there are each position can be filled in k different possible ways so instead of uh, this infinity we can actually write um, yeah r r a1 right r a2 right yeah r this is okay this is you know this much is enough any anything more than r or not necessarily r uh, you can write r plus 1 or anything more than r right then we can say but if it is less than r then things are going to be more difficult right if it is less than r then things are going to be more difficult we will we will consider this problem in detail later but as of now uh, we will give some uh, some special cases and probably we will try to solve it but yeah so first uh, let's say this uh, we are the first special case is this suppose we are only interested in making r permutations where r is equal to the size of s itself s as being a multi set you have to so count everything right with repetition number so suppose s is equal to say this one k1 times a1 and then k2 times a2 and say k uh, t times a t right this is this multi set not plus right this is this multi set that means the total the size of s adding together all the repetitions this is k1 plus k2 plus k t right and we are interested in making permutations of s that means everything from s should be ordered right it should be written on the list right or we are looking for r permutations or r equal to this sigma k i s right i equal to 1 to t right uh, now how many ways we can do so the we are uh, as i told we are only looking at the special case now namely uh, our multi set is now finite neither the repetition numbers are infinite no ai no type is infinitely available and uh, um, the number of types is just t here in fact it is finite so s is a finite set multi set and then we are only looking at ordered lists of size equal to the size of s itself that means we want to permit everything not like uh, we want we don't want to select a, a few of them and then want to uh, make all the ordered possibilities right so these are the two restrictions we have now our question is uh, how many ways we can do this thing so this can be answered uh, like we will give two different ways to answer this thing so one way is Way. suppose your type uh, is a 1 right sorry so now yeah here I have uh, yeah used a 1 to represent the number of okay fine we will we will do one thing so we will for the types you will write t 1 t 2 t k there are k different types and the number uh, of things of type t 1 will be a 1 say like that number of 
or we can just use n 1 prob probably that is that is neater. So, number of things of type t 2 is equal to n 2 and so on right. Number of things of type uh, t k is equal to n k. There are k different uh, types and each type has a certain number n 1 times it comes n 2 times these are the repetition numbers n 1, n 2, n k. Now, we want to show that the total number of permutations of the multi set S is n factorial divided by n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial into n 3 factorial into up to n k factorial. Recall this n 1 plus n 2 plus n k is equal to n because if you add up the repetition number sorry repetition number of each of these things each of the each of the types then you will get the total number this is essentially the cardinality of the multi set right so we want to show that the total number of permutations you can make is this how will you do this thing so one argument is like this one possible so you will take say t1 is the first type right so we will just write the objects of t1 as say t1 1, t1 2, t1 3, t1 4 and up to t1 n 1. It is like uh, the type we took and then we numbered them separately. So, we made them different somehow, we at least we can identify uh, so, okay, this is of same type, but still we have numbered them so that we can identify which is which from that. Similarly, t type of T2, we wrote like T21, T22, and then there are how many of them? T2, N2. And similarly, the kth type TK, we can write as TK1, TK2, and TKNK. This many ways we can do it, right? And this now it look at least it looks all different. If you just ask how many ways you can permute uh, this set now, I mean the multi set has become a set of uh, n things because that uh, now nothing repeats because these things we forcefully made them look different, right. So, therefore, that is only n factorial, right, n factorial. So, for instance, a permutation may look like T1, 1, say T2, 2, then again T1, 2 and then T2, 3, T2, 1, T3, uh, 2 and T1, uh, 3, T2, sorry T2, this is 4 say, like that T2, 5 and so on. It may look like this, but then we know that these are all same types, T1, T2, T2 these are all same types right t 1 1 t 2 t 1 2 uh, t 1 3 all are same types right. Now, suppose we had uh, taken this and put it here and this and this here sorry not this one. So, uh, suppose if we had taken this and put it here and this we brought here suppose as far as permutation is concerned this is a different permutation, but we know that actually they are not different because this T 1 1 and T 1 3 they are one and the same except that we have numbered them they, there is no uh, way of distinguishing them other than looking at our number we forcefully gave that number maybe somebody else cannot outsider cannot see that number right. We have a secret uh, uh, number we have say in a very small letter we have uh, using we just marked it using uh, somebody else outsider will not even know that they are these things are numbered. So, we have we are seeing this is what suppose if I took it here and took it here you are, I will recognize that this and this are different, but then outsider cannot recognize because they are of the same types. So, then uh, essentially this T 1 T 
T1 type T1, there are n 1 times we are seeing it in many places, right. In n 1 factorial ways, fixing all other things, I could have uh, permuted them in n 1 factorial ways. Each of these n 1 factorial permutations of these T 1s, right, T 1 1, T 1 2, T 1 3, T 1 n 1 would have contributed a different count, an extra count to this n factorial, this count, right, the total because in the total number of permutations we have counted, right. So, we know we can uh, draw to apply the division principle, we can do one thing. So, we can list all the permutations, all the n factorial permutations we created like this T 1 1, T 2 2 like that right. So, this permutations of multi sets we can write here on this side and this side we can write the actual permutations for instance T 1 T 2 say T 1 T 1 like this. In here it, it may have this number also T 1, T 2, T 3 like this, but then here it is not there. So, there is no way of uh, distinguishing uh, the uh, differences, but you know uh, any of these n factorial uh, permutations of these T 1s, I mean here fixing the other things that we know that that correspond to the same stuff here, we can put an arrow into that like this. Uh, which means that uh, all these things are mapped into this by a function, right. So, we are defining a function from here to here, right. So, each of these things actually correspond to this that means. So, when you remove our number, special numbers that we have given that will fall onto this. But not only this n 1 factorial uh, uh, permutations of the first type, actually uh, we could have uh, uh, for any fixing of this first type, we could also have permuted the second type in n 2 factorial ways, right. And for any fixing of the first type and any fixing of the second type, we could have permuted in all possible ways the third type, right. And finally, the k type we could have permuted. So, this many things will actually correspond to the same stuff, this is this number, same stuff here, right. So, for, in, for instance, what I am telling is here these three things, I could have one here, one here, you could have arranged them among themselves in any ways. Similarly, this T 2s, right, uh, in the with, without changing the positions relative to others within themselves. So, this position, this position, this position, they could have uh, shuffled themselves in any ways, that is n, n 2 factorial ways. Similarly, uh, for the third type, you could have done the same thing right n 3 factorial ways. So, total n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial into n 3 factorial into n k factorial ways of shuffling was there for any given uh, ordered listing of those things from the multi set, right. Because we just imagine that uh, this the uh, a certain type of things there n, n, n k things of k type and they all are different then they could have change them into these things, all those things will be listed here in this n factorial. But now as nice, uh, what is nice about this function, this function means this is mapped to this thing, what what it corresponds to this, right. And this is a d to 1 function, where d is equal to this number, right as you remember. We can apply the division principle and say that the total number of things here on this side, right, is what the number of things available here divided by this number t, right. How much is that? That is n factorial, sorry, that is n factorial divided by n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial into n 3 factorial into n k factorial, right. This we will get. So, we have applied the division principle here. Uh, what we did is, we considered the actual permutations of the multi set. That means, when the types are uh, for a particular type, there is uh, relative arrangement among themselves does not matter in fact, right. So, then uh, we just imagine that each type uh, can be within each type the members uh, can be distinguished, at least for us we can distinguish it. And then we know 
every for instance is type i there are ni of them then once you fix a permutation that ni factorial ways we can arrange themselves among uh, their own positions without affecting the other types right so each gives rise to ni factorial of them but then this can be done for each of those types so therefore uh, the actual one uh, permutation of the multi set will give rise to n1 factorial and n2 factorial and n3 factorial and nk factorial possible different ways of uh, permuting them uh, the permutations if we really assume that they are all really distinct right so but the total count is n factorial because if we assume all of them are distinct there is only n factorial because there are only n factorial permutations now uh, this corresponds to a d to 1 function where d is equal to this n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial right uh, into n 3 factorial and n k factorial and uh, therefore, we can apply that division principle and say the total number of uh, permutations of this uh, multi set uh, is n factorial divided by n 1 factorial into n 2 factorial into n 3 factorial into to n k factorial right this is what we have done. Of okay, course, so this is one way of looking at it. So, here uh, we cheated by um, imagining that uh, they are all distinct and then uh, we use the reduction principle to come back to the correct number. Uh, another way of doing it is a rather straight more straight way of doing this thing is. So, we know the multi set as n things we need to order them in n positions right. So, we just place uh, mark the numbers this is the first position, second position, third position, n positions. Now, the multi set is s this s has n 1 things of type t 1, n 2 things of type t 2 and uh, n 3 things of type uh, t 4 and, and uh, n k things of type t k right. Now, the question is uh, right. So, we can think that this should be placed here. So, this n 1 things of type t 1 has to be placed here, but there are n positions we just have to fix the positions for them right. So, we select uh, out of n positions available, we select n 1 positions for these things that can be done in n choose n 1 ways, n choose n 1 ways right, is not it, n choose n 1 ways. Because there are n positions available, we just have to decide which positions we should put the things of type t 1 and there are n 1 of them, we just select n 1 out of n positions right maybe it is selections can be something like this I select this I select this I select this something like this and I place the t 1 things here 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 there is only one way of placing for each selection. So, we just have to find out the positions if you are actually if these things were different we will also have to uh, the uh, worry which of which thing has gone here which of type t 1, but among the type t 1 which has gone here, but we know now we are assuming that they are indistinguishable. So, we just place them the t 1 type things that is all the 1 t 1 will go here, 1 t 1 will go here, 1 t 1 will go here, 1 t 1 will go here like that. Now, now that we have used n 1 positions from this n positions, we have only see like we have marked this this, this color. So, they are gone right they are already the t 1 uh, ty type t 1 things are sitting there. Now, the remaining positions we can we know right how many are there the remaining positions uh, we have n minus n 1 positions are there. Out of these n minus n 1 positions we have to uh, find the positions to place the type 2 things t 2 type things t 2 type things there are n 2 of them right. So, we just have to select n 2 select n 2 positions out of this thing right. So, we just maybe uh, this way. So, we select say some n 2 positions out of this we place them the t 2s are placed there right. 
there is they are indistinguishable things we just need to select the positions to place them correct number n2 of them that's it so we can place the t2 things here and now that you have placed uh, n2 there n2 t2 things there t type t2 things there and we have to worry about type uh, so okay t3 uh, n3 are there like but then now how many positions are left initially n positions were there now n1 was already used up by type t1 things and then n2 positions of uh, the remaining are already gone for type t2 things now this many positions are available and from this thing we have to select n3 things for type 3 things right so type 3 things and for type 4 things so we have to select uh, uh, see from the remaining n minus n1 minus n2 minus n3 positions we have to select n4 and so on right like like this it go so we multiply the possibilities then we will get how will the formula look like n choose n1 into n minus n1 choose n2 into n minus n1 minus n2 choose n3 and finally we the last term will be n minus n1 minus n2 minus n so like that so we will we will keep on n minus n k uh, n k minus 1 so n k so this way because the last once you fixed all these things last uh, because this is actually what this will be n k because we this n is the sum of n 1 plus n 2 plus n k minus 1 this will be like n k choose n k so that will be just one one way of because just n k positions will be left we will put the last type there that is what now but what is this complicated formula this is indeed a complicated formula so we have to simplify it so let us try we know what is n choose n 1 n 1 that is n so maybe we can use a different color n factorial divided by n 1 factorial sorry divided by n 1 uh, factorial into n minus n 1 factorial is this now into this one what is this this is this ok this is n minus n 1 factorial divided by because of it is n minus n 1 uh, now n 2 factorial into n minus n 1 minus n 2 factorial good thing is that see this the second term here is the same as this thing here right so they will cancel like this similarly the same thing will happen in the next term right because here is n minus n 1 minus n 2 factorial divided by n 3 factorial into n minus n 1 minus n 2 minus n 3 factorial so I am just not writing so this will cancel off so like that it will cancel like this like this so it will and then next this will go so what will be left this n 1 factorial will be left below see this factorial will not get cancelled and this will get cancelled this this will not get cancelled so I will mark it with blue so this uh, yeah so Yeah, so this is. Yeah, so this when we when when we put this thing, this will, this will go away. The upstairs, the in the numerator, we have n factorial. In the denominator, we have. Um, in the denominator, we have. Uh, 
okay in the denominator we have uh, this n1 factorial n2 factorial and n3 n3 factorial uh, that will be left and uh, let's see so so we will get this formula so the, it's okay here instead of a1 factorial a2 factorial we can write n1 factorial n2 factorial n k factorial so before uh, because anyway the time is almost over so i'll just mention one more thing here see to to summarize we were considering multi sets and then um, we are considering the permutations of that so we started with this question suppose s is a multi set so there are certain k different types there but each type can be finite or infinite uh, so now how many are permutations ordered list of length r can be made from this multi set s this was the question right um, so the one example for this uh, uh, question for instance uh, see suppose we want to create ternary num numerals with at most four digits right so four digit means it uh at most four digits that means we can also initially if it is a three digit number we can say that uh, it starts with 0 0 1 2 0 it's a ternary number uh, with a three digits but we can just say that i always use uh, four digit just that when it is a three digit number i'll use put a zero in the beginning that means the first position can be uh, filled with uh, either zero or one up to zero uh, one or two the second position also can be filled with 0 1 or 2 the third position also can be filled with 0 1 or 2 right so this is one example of uh, this this kind of uh, setting so there are uh, here we have uh, um, infinite number of zeros available right because you know zeros doesn't run out uh, of stock similarly infinite number of ones available infinite number of twos available you can fill them because just because you filled it in one place it's not true that uh, in another place you cannot fill it right so this is one example of that so four positions we can use 4 uh, into sorry 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 that means 3 raised to 4 see um, this is an example where infinite uh, uh, repetition number is infinite right um, after that we considered the uh, situation where all the number of types is finite and uh, the repetition numbers are also finite then we considered the special case where r is actually the size of the multi set itself that means we want r permutations where r is equal to the sum of the repetition numbers right of all the types say we considered repetition numbers to be say n1 n2 n3 and k so because there are k types each eighth type is ni Uh, repetition number is ni so now sigma ni is equal to r now we want to permit all the things in the multi set that's what we were saying and then we saw two proofs uh, to show that this repetition number is actually n factorial divided by n1 factorial into n2 factorial into um, uh, yeah so nk factorial in the numerator we have n factorial denominator we have the product of all those ni factorials right so in the next class we continue with some examples